so rare, both doctors have never seen a case of it. We've only read about it in the book. A young girl, a rare disease, and how her own father could save her life. We could cure this with a liver transplant. Have you guys thought about doing that? I was actually a perfect donor. They would remove her bad liver and mine would kind of grow back. Beating the medical odds. All new today on The Doctors. Hello and welcome to The Doctors. When faced with medical dilemmas, humans are forced to make a decision to get bitter or get better. Today we're going to introduce you to people beating the medical odds when they're stacked against them. Like nine-year-old Brianna, who dreams of being a superstar each and every night, but instead of getting tucked into a bed with a cozy blanket over her, she sleeps under blue lights that not only help keep her warm, but they're necessary to keep her alive. My daughter Brianna has a liver disease. It's called Krigler-Najjar syndrome. She was born without an enzyme that causes her skin to be yellow. Because of my daughter's liver condition, she has to sleep under phototherapy lights for eight to 12 hours a night, every night of her life. If she doesn't sleep under these lights, some serious side effects could occur. Yellowing of her eyes and her skin, hearing loss, brain damage, and death. The diagnosis was the scariest part because I didn't know how long I'd have her. I didn't know if I'd bring her home. I didn't know what was wrong with her exactly. When our daughter was born, she was extremely yellow in the skin. The doctors explained it to be jaundice. Her bilirubin levels were just way too high. Brianna was about a month and a half old when she was finally diagnosed with krigler najjar syndrome. My name is Brianna Minnick. It's been about nine years since I've had this little disease. My skin turns yellow often when I get stressed out or sick. Every night, I take my medicine and I go to sleep. Uh, we'll come in, Brianna will be sleeping, and then pull the blankets completely off of her. Because if we don't, the lights are pretty ineffective, so we get the blankets completely off. And we just simply flip that switch there. In the morning, I come in, I turn on her bedroom light, turn off her phototherapy, and I wake her up so she doesn't even see the blue lights on. Brianna, time to get up. Come on. Come on, we have school. Brianna's social life is limited. She cannot go sleep at a friend's house because she doesn't have her lights. Some kids have not wanted to play with her because they said her eyes are green and she looks like a monster. It's hard for her to come home and tell me that she plays by herself and she looks at me with a smile on her face with her eyes filled up saying, it's okay, mommy. I like to be by myself. My biggest dreams for Brianna is just for her to be happy and healthy. Of course, I'd love for her to go to college and I'd love for her to be successful and married and maybe be a mom one day. But those might not work for her. So whatever she does, if she's happy and healthy, I will be happy. Brooke and Bob are joining us for a doctor's daytime exclusive. And That's hard for you to even watch, isn't it? It is. Do you two go to bed scared every night? <laughs> I, I, I think we did, and now we just treat it as a normal everyday thing uh, because that's what we teach to her and preach to her. So if, if we tell her to treat it that way, uh, we have to, as they say, lead by example and, and treat it the same way as well. Now, yeah. I'm assuming that the two of you had never heard the term Kriegler Najjar before. We've no. never Brianna was born. No, no never, never heard of it. Even when they told us at the hospital, we still had no idea what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. We had to run up to the uh, to the library to do as much research for hours when she was first diagnosed. She was the fifty uh, second person in the country to ever have it, and the two hundred and twelfth in the world. Um, now, since then, there's been quite a quite a few liver transplants uh, in, in children who have the uh, disorder. Uh, which now at this point makes it so much more rare than what it was when she was born. Of course, Kriegler Najjar in Brianna causes her to be jaundiced because of a buildup of bilirubin. I'm going to explain to everyone with this animation exactly what's going on with Brianna. If you think about your body, your red blood cells are constantly recirculating, but over time, old red blood cells 
are actually filtered through the spleen, and one of those breakdown products is bilirubin, those yellow dots you're seeing there. That makes your skin look yellow if your liver is unable to do the job of processing them. In Brianna's case, she's lacking an enzyme to break down that bilirubin, so that bilirubin builds up in the bloodstream, yellowing the skin, but can also cause brain damage, etc. The blue lights, the phototherapy, is what is then used to help break down the bilirubin, which then can then be urinated out since her liver is not able to do the job. The problem is that your bilirubin, our bilirubin, is, it may be 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Brianna's is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. And without this treatment, it's not a pill, it's a light. Yeah, it's basically a tanning bed. That's yeah, exactly what that's called. As a matter of fact, yeah, her lights, it is a tanning bed. It, it, was, was, converted. it was converted. They, it was completely gutted, rewired, and they pulled the actual tanning bulbs out and, and put in the, the special phototherapy bulbs that she sleeps under every night. And we use those all the time in young babies. And as a matter of fact, you know, jaundice, newborn jaundice is almost we considered normal or expected. And, you know, it, it, most babies are born with a, a liver that's a little immature, so that belly rumen builds up. And then usually it goes away after right. a, a few, maybe a week. Usually by two weeks it's completely resolved. And Rihanna probably was following that pattern, right? And that's it's just a couple of days, oh, it's just jaundice. Exactly. And then after a few weeks. The doctor weeks, said... It's probably just jaundice, and we were in and out of the hospital, and then finally, um, after about 10 days, they her level went up to 27, wow. and they said, okay, it's not just jaundice. She needs to go to the big hospital. So we took her, and they went put her through tests and blood work and, and everything you could think of until they came with her, telling us she has Craig Renard. Okay. She's been doing this for eight, nine years now. Yeah. This is daily routine, the blood work, the lights, the medicine, the even the common cold. She has, usually goes to the hospital because if she has a fever, she has to go right to the emergency room. I mean, it's just normal. It's become normal even with our six-year-old son. He just, it's just yeah. normal. He'll say, yeah, he'll say, hey, my mom and dad, Brianna looks like she's getting sick because he'll notice that her eyes are much more yellow than normal. We could cure this with a liver transplant. Liver transplant. Have you guys thought about doing that yeah we, we, we have thought about about it um sorry we actually did all the yeah we we did all the testing they sent our blood work uh, to a, a, a hospital in new york i ended up coming back and saying that i was actually a perfect donor um to provide uh, essentially a portion. i mean from what we understand a portion of my liver to her uh, they would remove her, her bad liver, and mine would kind of grow back. And it's, it's, it's really quite fascinating how this works. You know, we, we cure this by removing the de diseased liver and essentially gr growing a new one. And, mm -hmm. and it's called a live liver donor, and I'm going to show you kind of how that works. A portion of the donor liver, usually the right lobe, is removed and put into the recipient. And then that small piece of liver starts to regenerate and it's the only organ in the body that can regenerate itself and you, your liver the donor liver will grow back into its original size and then the recipient liver will grow into the uh, into be a fully functioning liver in terms of organ transplant surgeries it's probably one of the more safe ones uh, and usually very little complications mm -hmm. so but, but the one thing that we wanted to ask you is you do a liver transplant and Brianna would have potentially your liver and her, and, and that means anti-rejection medications exactly. for life. Is that something that you all have worried yeah, we, about? We, we've been concerned with it forever. So it's medication for the rest of your life, regardless. It's worries for the rest of your life, regardless. Uh, and that's that's after that speed bump of, of everything working out correctly, which you don't know if you're even gonna get over that to begin with. Really, your daughter. She's nine years of age, she's beautiful, she's smart, she's rambunctious, Brianna. We're going to meet her and also hear in her own words how she's been fighting this disease. Stick around. Coming up, this little girl gets the surprise of her life. What if I told you? And later... 
My daughter Brianna has a liver disease. It's called Krigler-Najjar syndrome. She was born without an enzyme that causes her skin to be yellow. Because of my daughter's liver condition, she has to sleep under phototherapy lights for 8 to 12 hours a night, every night of her life. If she doesn't sleep under these lights, some serious side effects could occur. Yellowing of her eyes and her skin, hearing loss, brain damage, and death. <laughs> When you're against tough medical odds, you have to find a way to get even, just like lovely nine-year-old Brianna has. She has successfully been battling a rare liver condition. Thanks for being here. And, and your, your little brother Brennan's here as well. Brennan. And I have to ask you, Brianna, you you understand now why you always have to sleep under a, a light? Yes. So when your mom and dad were telling us every night since you were really little you've been sleeping under a blue light so what happens if you go travel somewhere if we go traveling somewhere um we have these lights and we travel with them so if we go out for for a week we we take them with us and we we use them so they can help break down the billy movement i took a walk yesterday when we when we were here and I looked up at our hotel room, and there's hundreds of windows. And then there's this one big, bright blue window. <laughs> and I said, okay, there, there we are. <laughs> yeah. And since she's gotten much older, what we typically like to do is let her go to sleep normally. Uh, don't, don't treat it as, as any other uh, way of putting a nine-year-old girl to sleep. Once she falls asleep, that's when we, we turn them on. So, and, and then when we come in in the morning, usually Brooke is there to wake her up in the morning for school. She'll turn the lights off and then wake her up. So eight to, to 12 hours a night under these lights, and she practically doesn't even know she's under them at this point. What about just the regular sunlight? You try to get outside. If we can get her out in the sunlight um, in the summer, we do. I just send her out. Um, the sun definitely helps break down the bilirubin. Yeah. It's not as powerful as the phototherapy lights, but it definitely does help. But almost like years ago, you know, in... We, that's actually how we learned that the lights helped. We found that the babies with jaundice in the nurseries near the window had less problems with the bilirubin. And then we thought, okay, maybe we can use artificial light as well. And I heard that you want to be a pop star, and then one of the things you do to relieve stress is you're a singer and a dancer. Yes. Is this true? Nice. <laughs> I, in fact, can confirm it because I think we may even have a little video oh, of little uh, They want to dance. Lesson, if you want. Oh, there we go. Let's get up. Come on. Let's get up. Let's get up. Okay. I'll get up too. Come on. Let's get up. Let's get up. The key is to just move your arms a lot. Put your arms up like. Okay. Ready? <laughs> oh, yeah. Move my arms. Yeah. Oh, I did. That's good. Doing okay. the robot. You move your legs a little, like, back and like, forth. Okay, Brandon. Brandon, you have to get in here too. Come on, Brandon. Well, I, I also heard that you know you were coming out here to LA hoping to you know maybe meet someone. Well, what if I told you that uh, do you like the show Austin and Allie? Yes. What if I told you? that the main characters in that are on the phone right now. I want everyone to welcome the stars of the hit Disney Channel show, Austin and Allie, Laura and Ross to the show. And they have a little message for you, Brianna. Hi, Brianna. Hey, hey. what's up? Hi. 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 Hi.
We're going. Come on, yeah. You're coming too, Brandon. Go ahead, get up there. stories we talked about go to the doctors tv.com and no matter what the diagnosis might be remember hope and human resilience they're an unpredictable and a powerful combination they can certainly defy the odds when you look at brianna's joy or joey's persistence tommy's talent and resourcefulness i'm reminded what life is like when we make the most of it so don't squander the life you've been given make it count those are my doctor's orders Thanks so much for joining us.